Hello and welcome back to Aging Well, a monthly production of Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. I'm your host, Nathan Lamb, and our topic today is caregiver stress, how to identify it and how to avoid it. Um, I have a couple of great guests in the studio with me today who are very knowledgeable on this topic. I'd like to introduce you. Hi, I'm Nina Cohen. I'm the social work manager of the Adult Family Care Program at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services, and I supervise the social workers who are in the home providing support to caregivers and oversee other clinical aspects of the program. Welcome. Thank you. And I'm Carolyn Nagao Marcotte and I'm a private care manager with our Community Living Options Program at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services and I work with elders and their families in the greater Boston area. Welcome back. Thanks. So I guess the place to start, um, you guys work with caregivers a fair amount in your roles. Um, so you probably, caregiver stress, is this something you see a fair amount of? Definitely. I think um, pretty much every caregiver gets stressed at one point or another. Um, so it's definitely something that is across the board, all different types of caregivers. They all have the um, different strains that they're facing, physical, social, financial, emotional strains of caregiving. So I think it's just kind of inevitable that at one point a caregiver is going to feel stress. Uh, I think some caregivers um, who are living with um, the person they're caring for have different kinds of stress than the person who is maybe a long distance caregiver, but they all kind of have different challenges mm -hmm. and it's completely normal to have stress in those situations. So I guess that's a good place to start is it's not unusual if you are feeling stress in that role. Um, and can we talk a little bit about warning signs that when you're you're sort of approaching that place where like you're maybe that race car going into the red a little bit. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the warning signs that are... Sure. Um, I think when, um, when you're caring for somebody but you're no, no longer having time for your own self-care, you're not able to meet your own needs in terms of getting enough sleep or eating well or getting the exercise um, that you need um, or not being able to um, keep track of all the tasks you have and be able to follow them through, uh, difficulty sleeping, um, having a strained relationship with the person you're caring for, just having the stress kind of come between you and that person, um, those are all signs. And they all sound like they could feel fairly overwhelming. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, generally you see more irritability, um, a, a decrease in the patience level of the caregiver. They can start feeling a little bit at their wit's end. And like Carolyn said, not doing enough self-care, which many caregivers don't feel like they have the time to do self-care to take care of themselves, so that's a big challenge. And caregivers start feeling more forgetful, like Carolyn said, having a harder time managing all the tasks that come with being a caregiver. So I think those are some of the warning signs, definitely the irritability, <coughs> lack of patience. I think it's a very rewarding experience to be a caregiver, but I do think that some of those things may wear on you and you find yourself having feelings of guilt or resentment towards the person, and that's all just kind of part of that experience. Absolutely. Yeah. And so these are common issues. Hopefully there are some fairly general ways and strategies that people can help de-escalate these sorts of situations. Um, yeah. Well, we both talked about self-care, and I think good self-care is really important when you're a caregiver, so that's taking time for yourself, to take care of yourself, having time away from the person you're caring for, mm. which can be extremely challenging. So we often encourage people to enroll their loved one in a, a day program of some type, mm. the person they're caring for, so that they can kind of have time away from each other. Mm. And that can be helpful for the person receiving the care as well as the person providing the care, having a little separation. Mm -hmm. um, and I think just, different, even different techniques like mindfulness, mm -hmm. we encourage, but I think we often run into a care, caregiver saying, when am I gonna have time for that? So that goes back to having someone be out of the home during the day and at, at some type of program, which can be really helpful. I think it's important also to recognize your limitations <coughs> a little bit. So maybe having realistic 
um, expectations about how much time or energy um, it's going to require for you to care for somebody and not being afraid to ask for help when you need it. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important. You don't have to take it all on on your own. And how difficult is that? That's something that I think I've heard about several times. It's not easy to ask for help, is it? No, I think people feel a lot of pressure to be you know, the one person who's taking care of everything for that person. They think that that's, an ex that's expected of them. Um, but often there are family members who maybe can help out in small ways if you let them know. Um, it would be really helpful if you take mom to the doctor or if you took her to the hairdresser, things like that, or getting professionals involved that can also help take off some of those tasks. Yeah, we often tell our caregivers they don't need to be a superhero. They don't have to do it all themselves. They shouldn't do it all themselves. We do run into some caregivers who are fairly isolated and they mm -hmm. don't have family members or friends nearby who can help and we try to work with them to seek out other supports, maybe formal supports, other providers, but we definitely tell people they don't have to do it all themselves. I was talking to a caregiver and she said even having a family member go buy the milk was mm -hmm. taking a load off of her plate. Mm -hmm. So even the little things can be helpful. Absolutely. and. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention November is National Family Caregiver Month. Ah. Mm -hmm. I, I hope I got that correct, but I do remember the theme for this year <coughs> is um, features how caregiving is really an around the clock mm -hmm. yes. commitment. So definitely yes. probably good to recognize that this is a major undertaking, mm -hmm. um, but and hopefully they're not alone in it. And they, they can yeah. find ways to get connections that can help. And I think with many caregivers who don't have a lot of time, we work with caregivers who are part of the sandwich generation, caring for their parents and their children, mm -hmm. and maybe even working. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then we have caregivers who you know, do work uh, part-time jobs or sometimes even full-time jobs. So it really isn't just the caregiving that they're doing. They have other aspects of their life that take up time as well. So it is really hard to find that balance. Absolutely. We have some great people who can help at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. That's all for our first segment. We'll be right back with more Aging Well. Mm -hmm. 